This question is a GRE quant practice question. It's a tough question from the topic statistics and average. Focuses on two concepts in statistics, median and range. Consider seven integers whose median is 150 and range is 100. The median for the three smallest integers is 75. What we need to compute is a maximum range for the three largest integers. How are we going to go about it? Sometimes visualizing it, getting it in a pictorial form is a lot easier to understand what the question says. So let's try and depict these numbers in a pictorial form, starting by assigning variables to them. Let's say these seven numbers are x1 to x7. x1 is the smallest of these numbers, x7 is the largest of these numbers, and x1 to x7 is the ascending order of these numbers. Let's start with the first piece of information. The median of these seven numbers is 150. Seven numbers, the median is going to be the fourth term from the left. So the fourth term x4 is equal to 150. So the first data has been plugged in. The range of these seven numbers is 100. So the gap between x1 and x7 is 100 or x7 minus x1 is equal to 100. So we picked up the second data. The median for the three smallest integers is 75. What are the three smallest integers? If x1 to x7 is in the ascending order, x1, x2, x3 are the three smallest integers. So the median for these three smallest integers is x2, the second term. The value of that is equal to 75. So plug this also in. Now let's understand what do we have to find out. We have to find out the maximum range for the three largest integers. Maximum range for the three largest integer. What are the three largest integers? x5, x6, x7. We are trying to find out how high can the gap between these two numbers x5 and x7 be. We want to find the maximum possible gap between these two numbers. When is that possible? Look at this arrow mark and look at this diagram. This is possible if I push x5 as much to the left as possible and push x7 as much to the right as possible. So if I have to widen the gap, you'll have to find out the maximum possible gap between x5 and x7. That's achieved when x5 is pushed max to the hill to the left and x7 is pushed as much to the right as possible. Which essentially translates to minimize x5 and maximize x7. Let's take it one step at a time. Let's consolidate whatever numbers I've written here in a printed form. Look at assigning these variables in a printed form. Consolidate it one step. It's essentially recapping what you have done in this slide before we move further to minimizing x5 and maximizing x7. Here is the data all in a printed form. Median is 150, right? The numbers be x1 to x7, ascending order, x1 being the least and x1 7 being the largest. The median for the three numbers is the middle number, which is the fourth number, that's 150. The median of the three smallest integers is x2, that is equal to 75. So we just plugged in this data and basically computed this. We said that our objective is to maximize the three largest numbers. The three largest numbers are x5, x6 and x7. When will they get maximized? If I push x5 as much to the left as possible and x7 as much to the right as possible. So pushing x5 to the left, our objective is to maximize this range x7 to x5. That is going to happen when I push x7 as much to the right as possible, which means I'm trying to pick the maximum possible value for x7. If I push x5 as much to the left as possible, then I'm actually finding out the minimum possible value for x5. So if x5 is minimized and x7 is maximized, which is when the range gets maximized, right? Push this to the left, which is minimizing it. Push this to the right, which is when x7 is maximized. Let's start by the first step. Let's minimize x5. What is the least possible value for x5? We know that x5 should be to the right of x4 because these numbers are in an ascending order. But we want to push x5 as much to the left as possible. So the temptation is to make x5 a 151 x4 is 150, so x5 is 151. That's how low it can get. Hold on. Has a question anywhere mentioned that these numbers are distinct integers? It has not mentioned it. So why should x5 be a 151? The least possible value for x5 is a 150. Keep this in mind. x5 cannot be lesser than x4. Can x5 be, x5 be equal to x4? It can very well be equal to x4 because these numbers are not distinct. So the minimum possible value for this question for x5 is actually the value of x4, which is equal to 150. Two conditions that x5 has to meet is that it is not distinct, so it can be the same as any other number, and that it cannot be lesser than x4. Cannot be lesser than x4, can be greater than x4, can be equal to x4, which is the least possible value then being equal to x4. So minimum value for x5 is equal to 150. So part one done, step one done. Step two, what we are going to do, we are going to find out the maximum possible value for x7. Maximum possible value for x7, look at it, x7 to x1, the gap is equal to 100. We have rewritten it this way as x7 equals x1 plus 100. I'm going to pick some random values to help us understand what's going to happen. Let me say if x1 is equal to a 50, 
what is going to be the value of x7? That's going to be 100 more than that, which is 150. Let me pick randomly some other value. Let's say x1 is equal to 280, some number. So what will x7 be equal to? x7 is going to be 100 more than that. That's going to be equal to 380. I'm not saying that these are possible values for this question. I'm just plugging in some random number. So you realize as I increase x1, the value of x7 also increases and it increases by the same 100, which essentially means that if I maximize x1, then consequently x7 also gets maximized. So what is the maximum possible value for x1? Look at it, x1, x2 are the ascending order of these numbers. So x1 has to be to the left of x2. x1 cannot be greater than x2, that's what it means. If x1 cannot be greater than x2, x1 either has to be less than x2 or x1 has to be equal to x2. x1 can be less than x2, very well, okay. The maximum therefore possible for x1 is when x1 is equal to x2. So if x1 is equal to x2, that's the maximum possible value for x1. That is equal to 75. If that's a 75, then the maximum possible value for x7 is 100 more than that, which is equal to 175. Let's consolidate up till this before we find out the maximum range, right? We said that you have to maximize x1. That is going to happen if I push x1 as much to the right, because x7 will move 100 units right from where x1 is. So you maximize x1, you have maximized x7. Next step is to find out what is the maximum possible value of x1. We did it in the last slide, I'm consolidating here. x1 cannot be greater than x2 and these numbers are not distinct. So x1 cannot be greater than x2 means x1 can be less than x2 or x1 can be equal to x2. If it is x1 is less than or equal to x2 is what the inequality boils down to. So how high can the value of x1 be? It can be equal to x2. When it is x2 is when it gets maximized. That value is equal to 75. If max x1 is 75, max x7 is going to be equal to 100 more than that, which is 175. So what do we have to find out? We need to find the maximum range for the largest three numbers. That we said is equal to max x7 minus min x5. Max x7 is a 175. Min x5 is a 150. We computed in the last slide. So difference between the two, the maximum range possible for the largest three numbers is a 25. Would recommend? Close the video right now. Pick the question. Try and solve it to yourself. See if you can get it. If you get stuck at any step, revisit this video. It's a good question to understand the concept of ranges, median, how something can be maximized. Keeping track of the value information that numbers are distinct or numbers are not distinct. You could actually try this question with a very event. Check out, add one extra word. Consider seven distinct integers and run through the same exercise. Check out what is going to be the maximum possible range for the three largest integers. Everything remains the same. I'm just going to add one extra word which is make it distinct and try that as a variant. Report your answers for this variant in the comment section of this video. Before you leave, I want you to do two things. One, sign up as a trial user for Visaco's online GRE course at online.visaco.com. Takes all of three minutes and two steps to get started. And lastly, subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash We keep adding newer questions, give you tips, tricks on how to crack the GRE.